we can go into uh, questions. So Carlton obviously is sort of the the player that everyone was anticipating seeing. Um, had a good stat line for the most part. But I'm curious, he is the worst on the plus minus. It looked like the rest of the team maybe was trying too hard to get him involved and get him going. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, it's been happening a little bit in practice too. Um, and it's really, it's it's been like kind of fascinating to watch. We've been doing it a lot in practice uh, over the past week or so. We've been kind of like force feeding him. Um, and we did it a little bit again tonight. And we've, we've talked about it in practice and it's happening. We're, we're playing live and guys are just really trying to like get him the ball. And I don't know if that's a, it's nothing really by my design. Like, hey, we're going to give it to him no matter what. I think it just might be a little bit of a team emotional uh, psychological thing that we've got to find a way to work through and just treat him like everybody else. And if he's there, he gets it. And if he's not, he's not. But it's real. I, I, I noticed it tonight, and I've noticed it really for the past week or so in practice. So that's the, the team. What do you think about Carlton? Um, yeah, I think he did what I wanted him to do, which was affect the rim at both ends. I thought, um, you know, obviously he scored around the rim offensively, and I thought he changed, the, you know, some defensive shots around the rim as well. I thought on court. Technically, that was the biggest thing he was going to bring to us is just a big mobile big that can affect the two-point percentages at both ends. And that's probably as, you know, a field goal percentage defense. It was a good night for us, which it hasn't been of, of late. And, and offensively, I thought he, he was able to score around the rim as well. And those are plays that unfortunately so far this year, those don't go in with the same kind of percentage. So I think he technically affected our two-point percentages at both ends, which was, which was good. Um, and I think it just gave our team, like I said, just a little bit more experience on the floor, uh, which, which we all kind of need right now we, we still have some kids out there we still have some younger guys making some some kind of young mistakes but he you didn't see as many of those just because of the reps he kind of has under his belt coach Bragg is an entertainer a lot of personality yep hustles quick both sides of the floor good move there at the end to get his 16 point yep rhetorical question happy Henry there. you always come with the haymakers man here we go what yeah, do we happy what do we there. got is he happy he's out there? Of course I'm happy he's out there. Uh, I wish it would have happened eight games ago, but um, I'm not even going to kind of get into that at this point. Um, it's here now. Uh, I'm happy for him from a life perspective, not even as his basketball coach, um, to know where he was, where he went, and where he is now, and just see that life story and to be a part of that. I hope that this is a nice chapter that we're all going to be a part of. You never know for sure, but for now, um, it's it's going a certain way. And I hope for his own sake, independent of the basketball court at times, um, he's able to kind of, you know, have a good chapter here as a Lobo. Paul, uh, Vance and McQuatch have had one game this year where they're double figures together. So generally speaking, statistically, they don't seem to play well. Yeah. Is there a correlation there? Yeah, yeah. Vance and Dane, um, you know, I, I think it was, early second half both complained of kind of some injuries so we didn't go back to them there they didn't really play down the stretch um i don't think it's anything long term but they just kind of both said some things were bothering them so we didn't play well really to be honest with you quatch hasn't had i thought that was his probably best kind of breakout game of the year and not just because he made some threes it's the best offensive rebounding game he just had some energy to him that i've been pleading with him forever so that was Really encouraging to kind of see him break forward because I think we've talked about it here. I think based on our youth, we kind of went into this year counting on Vlad and McQuatch to be like seniors. They're still sophomores, you know, they're still kids, but we need them. We, we need to rely on their minutes as we get all these other guys and new guys kind of caught up. So I'm happy he was able to kind of break out and have the game that he did. And it wasn't just the threes. It, it, to me, it was also that, that offensive rebounding for him was great, and I thought it really got him going. The dunk he had kind of baseline, yeah. a little similar to the dunk he had about a week or so ago in practice, and then did nothing the rest of that practice, kind of wouldn't let a play like that carry over. Mm -hmm. um, I think you may have even talked to him that practice about after that dunk or made, made some comments about that dunk and do something else. Yeah. Um, is that part of his growing up is like actually 
parlaying a good play into another good play or let it carry over? Yeah, I mean, we, we set a lot of ball screens in our offense. So um, we've got a lot of young guards. And Quatch, in that regard, is a, is a freshman because he played forward last year. And he's just learning how to use ball screens like a lot of these kids are. And there are times he makes some really good reads on them, like a play like that. And then times that read is there and he doesn't take it. And he's just going through that. It's like a quarterback learning their reads. And that's what these guards are going through. And that's why there's times they come off and it looks smooth. And there's a guy's getting a wide open shot. And you're like, wow, why don't they do this every time? And then they'll come off another time and they unfortunately to just make like a poor read so we just have to keep coaching and teaching him and all these guys how to use ball screens and how to play and hopefully that's just a a process that they'll keep growing in are you happy defensively second half yeah i thought um you know i think if you look at all of our games we've had good stretches you know we've had good stretches where we've done the things we want to do and we've had some poor stretches colorado we probably played 25 minutes of good basketball and 15 minutes of bad basketball and the 15 minutes killed us tonight i think when we look back at it we had our stretches but it was never near to that extent we were able and Carlton, I thought, was, was, was important to that. They'd be on a run, we'd be on the ropes, and we'd get the ball inside to him, and he'd finish a layup. And that's a shot that maybe over the past however many games, that rims out, they go the other way, they score, and it's another kind of nail in the coffin, so to speak. So, you know, we were able to break a lot of times. They were on a run, and they got it to eight or nine. We were able to kind of score again and just kind of keep that distance. So from that perspective, I feel good about that. We were asked about both ends of the floor with Carlton, but he only had one foul. And that was a stat that I know some of us maybe thought he sure. might be so amped up that he might just foul the whole bunch right off the bat. He, he didn't. Um, and the only foul he had was on a setting the screen. Were you happy with him on the foul? I, I think his composure overall, I think even when he made those first two free throws right out of the gate, I, I felt good. I felt like, you know what, he's not too excited. He's not too into this. He, he calmly stepped up, made two free throws. He, that first layup or two, I think he just kind of threw up. He's a little off, but as the game went on, he was able to just turn and finish around the rim. And um, I thought overall that foul is probably a reflection of, I think everyone watched it. He was like, you know what? He was pretty composed tonight. He, he didn't try and do much he couldn't do. Um, he took some shots that I'm going to go back and kind of talk to him about, but nothing too crazy. I thought he played within the game plan. I don't know what his line ended up being, but um, I thought he did a pretty good job tonight. 16 to 7. Uh, Coach, Gay lost in the shuffle also was Kareem, who I thought played his yeah. best game. Uh, can you talk about his effort, especially on the glass in the first half? Yeah, Kareem, the last, um, you know, we've had a couple of guys on this team that in that last week of November, first week of December, as we were kind of going through that stretch, um, had a lot of schoolwork going on. And I know that sounds probably not things people normally talk about, but we had two or three guys that were going from two practice, two tutors till whatever time, same thing the next day. And there was a lot of academic stuff and they're trying to finish their classes and get good grades and stay eligible and all these other things. And he was one of those guys. And I think once he kind of got through the clear, he just kind of like, he feels like a free man right now. And I think he's been practicing that way and hopefully he'll start to play that way where the stress of an exam tomorrow and this tonight and a tutor the next day, it's things that sometimes don't, you don't talk about, you know, or, or see. But I, I think that was a real thing for him over the past few weeks. So I'm, I'm glad he did his thing. And we've really been emphasizing these bigs to offensive rebound. So for him and, and McQuatch in particular to really go to the glass tonight, those are big, man. Those are, those are extra possessions that we're getting right now that really helped, helped us get a victory tonight. There were a couple of <clears throat> timeouts early on. You seemed to get a little verbose. Do you remember what you were telling the guys? Oh, man. Um, you're going to get me Henry T-ish here. Um, you know, most of it was one-on-one defense. Um, we, we've spent an incredible amount of time on the past few weeks trying to get better individually guarding the basketball one-on-one. And if you come to our practice, 40% of our practice is trying to learn and, and the techniques of playing one-on-one defense. And when we go out and don't do those things in the game, that's obviously frustrating because we spend so much time on it. There are things that happen in the course of the game maybe we didn't get to. Maybe we didn't get a chance to cover this or that or whatever. But when you spend so much time on it, you want to see 
you know, the, the results pay off. And quite frankly, we're still not getting those. We still have to get better at guarding the ball. That was something that took us a long time last year as well. When you play the style that we play, inevitably it turns into one-on-one -on -one possessions. And we just have to do a, good, a better job of just closing those possessions down. Yeah, uh, a couple of the coaches came to me uh, early second half or maybe mid second half. I don't remember exactly when. It just said Dane and Vance are done for the night. They're both kind of were complaining of, of an injury. So they just didn't get back in for that reason. I, 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 at that point, I don't know the extent of it. I don't think it's serious. No one's come to me post game. I'll probably find out a little bit more later tonight. But Vance and Dane were, were injury related, not, not coach related. No, it wasn't. It was it was new, um, and that's what really I was telling the coaches right after the game to 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 withstand those two guys not to do it. The three point shooting night that we had, which I hope isn't gonna happen very often, um, you know, to have all those things kind of go down and still just fight through and get a win, uh, it's it's really encouraging for this group. You have a team that knocked off the defending champs coming here on Tuesday. What do you say about them? Yeah, uh, Penn Saturday. Uh, North Texas is Tuesday, but North Texas, I just told you, they're 9-1. Um, they're really good. Uh, this is a top 100-ish team. We've had opportunities against these teams so far this year. We've won some. We've lost others. This is a game we got to lock in. Um, we're, we're, we're into it right now, getting prepared for them. Uh, a very formidable opponent um, that we have to go out and play well. Very well coached, very good team, 9-1. Uh, had some very good wins so far, and it's going to be a great test for our team right now in North Texas.